Christmas Around the World, provided to you by Fayette Progressive Preschool. Hi, my name is Retha, and I chose to do China, and I thought that we could do an origami Christmas tree. You can have your little ones, color a sheet of paper, maybe make some little dots on it. And the first thing we're going to do is to fold it in the shape of a triangle. So. Fold it like this. This extra little piece down here you can cut off. So then you have a triangle and then we're going to open it up and we are going to fold it again in the shape of a triangle, the opposite way. And then when you open it up, you should see an X. So then with the white side up, fold it in half. Then open it up and fold it again the opposite way in half. Mm -hmm. Then when you open it up, you should see a bunch of little triangles in there. And you're gonna lay it in front of you and pull it towards you. It should start to make a diamond. And press it down. Once you get it flattened out, you're gonna take each corner and fold it in towards the center. And press it down. Your little ones can help you press it down. So there's the first side and I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And when you get done, it should be shaped like this. You have this extra piece at the bottom, like a triangle. We're going to cut that off. Push it aside, and it's starting to look like a Christmas tree. Now we are going to open up, because we only have four. We're going to open up these corners. And you can put your thumb in there to try to get it to open up and then you're going to push it down flatten it out 
and you're going to do that to each one of them. Once you have them all done, you have a total of four pages on each side. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to get it to fold down right. It's not cooperating with me. There. So now I have four on each side. Now we're going to take our scissors and you're going to make three little cuts. And don't go clear across, just little cuts. And you're going to do that, the same cut on the opposite side of the tree. Once you got that done, now you're going to fold them in towards the center. And you should have like a little triangle right here. You're going to fold each of them like that. Until you get all the pages folded. So I got one side done, so I want to fold the other ones in now. Mine's probably taken a little bit longer than the other girls. But your little ones can use their little fingers and help push down it. This is good for them because they're using their small muscles, using their little fingers. Then you're going to continue to do this so you get all four sides done. And if it don't turn out perfect, it's okay. Every Christmas tree, none of them look the same, so. I'm sure it'll turn out beautiful. We're almost done. Got one more to do.
now that I got the last page done, it should look something like a Christmas tree. You're going to open it up and just kind of fold out your branches a little bit. Kind of fluff up the branches. And then you have your origami Christmas tree. Turn it sideways. And that is my Christmas tree. Thank you for watching. Hi everyone, today we're going to do our Ukrainian activity. Um, as you read in the slide, uh, the Ukrainians will go to January 6th and they'll go the whole day without eating and then that night they will go out and look for the first star, what they call the Star of Bethlehem. So for our activity, we are going to make a star. Now what you'll need is you'll need the popsicle sticks that I sent. You'll need a box of crayons, should be in your packet as well, and you will need glue. So what you're going to do is you're going to color each of your popsicle sticks. Now Miss Erin's already got a little started here. So see how you, I color this? Now you can color the front, the back, or you can just do the front, or you can just do the back, depends on how you look at it. So Miss Erin has got two solid colored ones and one with her name on it. Now I'm writing another one with some hearts on it. Now the thing about the Ukraine is on January 6th they try to go the whole day without eating. They might eat little snacks here and there which if you ask me that sounds like a miserable day but then once it starts getting dark out they make it a game to go out and see who can find the star first. So once they see that star, the Star of Bethlehem, they'll go in and have a 12 course meal. That is and they, that's how they start their celebration of Christmas there. Now on January 7th, St. Nicholas comes to visit them, but they really start celebrating on the 6th. See this one has stars, and this one has hearts, because that's what I wanted to draw. So then what you're going to do is you're going to put your glue at the ends of your popsicle sticks and then you're going to glue it all together. And you're probably really going to need your mom and dad to help you with this because making a star is a little tricky. So when you're all done, your star of Bethlehem should look just like this. Now you have your own star of Bethlehem to show everybody. And then afterwards you'll have to go out and sing carols too. Alright guys, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and enjoy your activities.
Hello everyone. Right now I am going to talk to you about Christmas in Angola. It is a place in Africa. Actually, it's a country in Africa. And um, what they do is they celebrate Christmas the same day we do on December 25th. And um, they do it a little differently with some different traditions. One of the traditions that I want to talk to you about today is um, a gift that they prepare for loved ones and friends and um, it's very personalized and um, you use a postcard which we'll have right here and you're also going to have some Christmas cutouts that you're going to glue on your postcard with the glue and then you'll also have some crayons that you can write your message on on <clears throat> the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start my Christmas card so that you can see a finished project of what it would look like and how um, yours could possibly look as well. So I'm going to start out on the side with the lines. Um, the side over here, you can put a stamp so you can mail it or if you just want to hand deliver it, that's fine also to somebody within your house, of course. Um, on this side, you can write a note, which I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, and it can be basic or it can be as, um, as deep and expressive as you want it. So I wrote Merry Christmas and then over here is where I would write um, the information of who it's gonna go to. So I'm gonna send this one to my sister. And I just, I put her name and then her address would go on there. And then on this side is where you're going to take your glue and you're just going to glue on your Christmas cutouts. And there's some different ones. You can use all of them. You can use some of them. You can even cut out your own Christmas um, decorations for it. And, um, you know, you can do it that way. However you want it. It's your postcard to your um, important people that you have in your life or somebody that um, has made an impression on you. So this is what the end result would look like for mine. And I've got my Christmas cutouts and I've got my message and who I'm going to send it to on this side. So I hope that you all have a very wonderful holiday and we'll see you soon. I'm Miss Holly and Miss Angela and myself for Christmas Around the World we are doing Germany so today I'm going to just give you um, a little information about Germany 
first of all, um, Germany is located in, the, in Northern Europe. Most people who live in Germany speak a language called German. Um, a couple of the traditions that they have are St. Nicholas Day is one of them, and that is a favorite holiday among the German children. On the night of December 5th, children clean and polish their boots and leave them outside the door before going to bed. The next morning, they wake up and they find their shoes filled with nuts, candies, and small gifts from St. Nicholas. And this is a picture of what St. Nicholas looks like in Germany. Also, a couple of their other traditions that they have is they have an advent calendar, and you can find those around here. Um, Christmas markets is very common. Christmas angels, um, just to name a few. So also they have um, gingerbread men is very popular. And leading into that, Miss Angela is going to re read you all a story about gingerbread men. Okay, one of my favorites that I've read is Gingerbread Friends. This is by Jan Brett, and this is from a series they have Gingerbread Baby and many other gingerbread stories. The sassy gingerbread baby lived in a scrumptious gingerbread house in the bedroom of a boy named Maddie. He was happy with the toys and the treats that Maddie made for him but something was still missing. One day he watched Maddie go off with his friends to go ski and skate and he knew what it was. I'm a gingerbread baby, happy as can be, until Maddie goes out and then it's lonely here for me. I want a friend of all my own, the gingerbread baby thought. The next morning Maddie stayed home but he was too busy in the kitchen to play, so the gingerbread baby slipped out and headed for the village to look for a friend. The gingerbread baby walked along the lane. He came to a bakery and he saw a man and a woman, just his size in the window. Maybe they would like to be my friends, he thought. Inside, the gingerbread baby popped up in front of them and sang, I'm the gingerbread baby, peppy as can be. I'll be a friend of yours if you'll be a friend of, with me. But the man and the woman just stared straight ahead like statues, eyes wide open. Next, the gingerbread baby spotted seven white swans swimming on a sugar frosting sea. He leaped toward them and called out in excitement, I'm the gingerbread baby, clever as can be. I'll be friends with you if you'll be friends with me. But the elegant swans didn't even honk a hello. They stayed exactly as they were, stiff and still. The gingerbread baby was about to give up when he saw a door just his size. I'll go in there and think about what to do next. He slid down the cake and ran inside where he fell fast asleep. Scritchy scratchy, the gingerbread baby woke up and found himself face to face with a real live mama mouse nibbling on his marshmallow pom-pom. Oh no, he thought, home is a place for me. And he ran out of the bakery with the mouse, the cat, the baker, and his wife not far from behind him. As the gingerbread baby raced home on his rooster, the unfriendly creatures chasing him were joined by a red fox who almost caught the gingerbread baby as he flew over the fence and ran into Maddie's house just in time. Tired and sad, the gingerbread baby started to cry. I am the gingerbread baby, lonely as can be. No one wants to be my friend as far as I can see. But then he heard some significant singing and a trail of cupcakes caught his eye. He
He climbed the stairs, and you'll never guess what he found. We're gingerbread friends. Playful as can be. We can be, we'll be friends with you if you'll be friends with me. And me and me. Hi guys, it's Miss Tessa. Today we are going to make a candlestick holder because Miss Ronnie and I chose the um, country Ireland for our Christmas around the world. And the reason why we're going to make the candlestick holders is because they represent welcoming. They put them in their windows and usually there are three candlestick holders that represent the Holy Family, Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. So today we're going to make the simple little decoration using our hand and a couple pieces of paper. And you'll have everything in your little packets that we're sending. So you'll need crayons, a glue stick, scissors, and all the construction paper that will be included. And here's the one that I already have made and I'm just kind of run through and show you how I did it. So I've already cut or traced my hand. And I'm just gonna cut that out really quickly. I've already traced my hand, so I don't have to take as long to do that. And the reason why we are gonna decorate with holly as well is before there were Christmas trees in Ireland, they would use holly bushes. And they would, um, the more holly that would, or the berries that was on the holly, the more luck that it brought in in the year. So that's why we're going to include a little bit of holly on our candlestick holders. And also, the candlestick holders, when they would place them in the windows at night, the families would leave their doors unlocked. That way, if the Holy Family was to arrive before they awoke, they could enter. So I thought it was pretty neat. So I got my hand cut out. I get my hands on my scissors. I got my hand cut out. Now what you're going to do is, and I'm going to have stuff pre-cut for you already. I'm going to have white paper in there for the candlestick. I've already got the holly cut out. I won't make you freehand that. That I tried that on my first one. It's not very cute, but I will include that. You'll just have to color it and then cut it out. So I'm going to put glue on my candlestick holder. Just a little bit. And then we're just gonna glue it to the back or front, don't matter. Just like that. And then you'll have a red piece of paper 
and it don't have to be perfect because mine is not. And it's just going to be the top of the candle. And if you don't want red and you have other colors like yellow or orange for a candle top, you can use that as well. Okay, now I have my, hopefully it stays. We got that. Now we're going to glue. I've already cut my holly out, save a little bit of time. Just put a little bit of glue on the back of the holly. And then I'm going to glue it on our hand. And there's our candlestick holder. So you guys can put them on your Christmas trees. You can tape them on your window, your front door, or however you want to decorate. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Hey, this is Miss Emily and this is Miss Stacy, and we're going to show you our activity for our Christmas Around the World project. Um, we decided that we wanted to pick um, Israel as our country, and the original Christmas story about baby Jesus comes from Israel because Jesus was born in a city called Bethlehem, which is located in Israel. So we wanted to make a nativity mobile for you guys to do, do while you're at home. So the first thing that you're going to need for your mobile are all the materials. You're going to need your characters that you'll be coloring and cutting out. The next thing that you're going to need are your straws, and there will be two of them that you need. You will also need five pieces of yarn and six because we have to tie it up all together. And we also need a box of crayons to color your characters and also some glue that you will glue onto your mobile and some scissors to cut out your characters. So we'll go over all this step by step so you know what to do. The first thing that you will need are two straws and a piece of yarn, and you will tie the straws together to make an X, and that will be your base for the mobile. The next thing that you're going to need are five pieces of yarn that will be in similar length, and they will be on your mobile. Step number three, what you're going to need is your characters and you're going to color five of them. 
And we recommend that you do color baby Jesus since he is a big part of the Christmas story. So we do recommend that you color baby Jesus and then pick out four other characters that you would like to color for your mobile. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out your characters that you've colored. And your child can cut them out. Or if your child is just beginning to use scissors, they, you can help them cut it out. And Stacy's going to show you what it will look like after they're all cut out. The next thing that you're going to do, step number five, is to tie your yarn onto each end of the straws, as Stacy will demonstrate. So there'll be a piece of string on each end. And then, of course, as she showed you, one that will go in the middle. And we recommend that's where you hang baby Jesus, is on the middle string. The next thing you're gonna do, step number six, is pick out one of your people that you colored and cut out, turn it over, and then put a piece of glue on the back of the person, and then attach the person to the end of the yarn. Then you will repeat the process until all of your characters are hanging from the yarn from the mobile. Once you've done that, let your glue dry for a few minutes, and then your mobile will be complete. And then you can hang it anywhere in the house, and we hope that this will bring a little bit of joy to your Christmas. Thank you. Christmas Around the World activity, I decided to read a book that I'm pretty sure that you've heard many times. It is called The Night Before Christmas. T'was a night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas would soon be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Ma, and Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cumit, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves up before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in the twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bow.
He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Thank you again to everyone joining us on our Christmas Around the World. I hope you enjoyed the activities.